What's up guys, my name is Patrick, this is Elevated Overland. Today we're going to be supercharging my four wheel drive 3RZ swap Toyota Sun Raider. It sounds so cool. Oh, she's a ripper. For those of you new here, this is my 1983 Toyota Sun Raider that we've converted to four wheel drive, done an engine swap in, put 529 gears in, and a whole bunch of other mods. Today we're going to be focusing on the next modification, TRD Supercharger. So this is a supercharger from LC Engineering. It's the high boost kit, but we're not going to be running it on high boost. We're going to go for five or six pounds. I want to do a detailed comparison of the fuel mileage before and after the supercharger, as well as the power before and after the supercharger. So today, what we're going to do, first things first, I want to take this out on the highway. It's, it's pretty warm right now, but we're going to warm it up, take it out on the highway, and try and do some zero to 60 pulls. The timing isn't going to be perfect because it's just me clicking the timer as I go, but we're going to get a good idea, a butt dyno, and a relative 0 to 60 time as to what this thing does. So before we go much further, we may as well go out on the highway, take this thing for a drive, and see what it can do. Alright guys, so we got the truck warmed up, and now we are going to go do some 0 to 60 pulls. I got premium in it, not quite a fuel tank, full tank of gas, and now we have an app that's supposed to do our 0 to 60. So we'll see what happens. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. So let's let's see what it does. traffic here Motorhome is very loud. 
So we need to work on that. I have transfer case problems. The transfer case bearings are going out. And uh, there's just things that weren't addressed in this build of mine that it's my build. So I'll fix it later, I said. Anyway, we're almost back to the shop. We're gonna get back to the shop. We're gonna put this blower on and have a good time. All right, guys, we just got back from our test drive and this thing ran great as usual. So what we got to do now is get ready to get the supercharger on the engine. Stock, it ran a 23 second zero to 60 approximately. So now we need to get the blower on this intake, get this intake ready to install over here by removing all of this junk, getting the throttle body off of this stock intake and moving a couple things around as well as adding a pulley. So we're going to waste no time. We're going to dive into the motor right after we get this switched over and we're going to get all this off, get the blower ready to go on. Alright guys, so we got this all together. It's all black again, so that's neat. I just happen to have a 8th NPT to 8th barb, which we're going to use as a boost reference for our boost gauge. We have this plug from the old manifold. That's just to plug this other one, which will probably be used for intake air temps eventually. And we have our new awesome 8 port jug on here. So, now we're going to go over to the engine and disassemble the engine. We need to get the intake off of it, get the throttle body off the intake, and a couple more things. So let's go over there and get into it. So, if you're ever curious where that 10 millimeter bolt goes when you drop it, it's usually right around there. Alright guys, so we got this thing down to a bare head, no more intake manifold, it's on the table over there. Now we need to test fit the supercharger to see if either of these power steering lines are going to be in the way, and with my luck they're both going to be in the way. But we're going to go ahead and keep a positive attitude, throw this thing on here, and assume that nothing is going to need moved. And this is going to be a very plug and play operation. Alright guys, so this is my first time seeing the blower on the engine, and it looks so good. So we do have to modify a couple things. This hose is touching, heater core hose is touching it. We have this hose, the return line for the power steering, touching it. This just needs twisted a little bit, so we'll quit touching it. And our engine dipstick is going to be quite tricky to check, but it is accessible, so we might just leave that alone. We have our, what I thought was going to be boost reference line, but it's going to be the fuel pressure regulator line. We'll get a boost reference line in there eventually. Other than that, everything's looking really good, and I think everything else is going to work. It's going to be interesting routing a couple things, but no big deal. I think the return line is going to be one of the bigger issues. Um, but again, all of this is very, very arbitrary to what we're doing here. We're putting a supercharger on this engine swapped four wheel drive converted motorhome. So, as far as custom goes, this is a very easy custom application install. Could have been worse, could have been better, but we're going to get back to work, pull this back off, and get this thing ready to go on for the final time.
Alright guys, so we battled the intake back on, or the supercharger I should say, and I was really battling the fuel inlet, but it turns out I had the wrong side disconnected, yeah, whatever. Uh, the instructions weren't the best, but we're here now. We adjusted the power steering hose so that it just clears this pulley. Uh, this hose is going to need just cracked and twisted just a bit. Um, this is secure, we got the fuel inlet going, we have the fuel return here, we're going to need a whole new re return line. Um, all the way back to the tank actually because it's one piece and I don't want to splice it I may throw in a splice right over there, but I'm not sure if I want to do that quite yet But the return line does need addressed, but it's gonna work for now Dottle cable looks like it's gonna work superchargers on one thing that kind of sucks I am NOT able to put the support bracket on right now, so We'll have to revisit that another day but what we're gonna do right now is get this which is our supercharger extra pulley and mount it where power steering bolts go so we're gonna get this on and then I think after that we're very close to kind of done I'm gonna have to check the oil I've never done an oil change in one of these so I'm gonna have to look that up that'll be interesting but things are coming along great and I'm super stoked to hear this thing run Alright, so as we were getting in here, I actually had to get the last injector and extend the wires out of the harness a little bit further back because this whole harness had to scoot forward to accommodate this ground. So that's just one thing to consider if you have a custom built harness and you're putting a supercharger on your motorhome. Just kidding, no one will ever probably use that piece of information, but that's what we had to do. So we're almost done connecting all the wiring back, so we're going to get going on the intake, that, getting the belt on. And we're getting really close to having a supercharger in here. Alright, so we have the supercharger on, we got the throttle body on, and everyone knows when you're buying something used, you're taking some risks. And I just found out one of the risks I took was stripped bolts on this aluminum cast housing. And one of these throttle body bolts, the bottom far one, didn't seem to want to get tight. It snugged up a little bit, but I have a feeling most of those threads in there were destroyed, and I wasn't doing it any favors. So, we'll see how long that lasts. I almost want to pull it out and put a longer bolt in, but we'll see. I just, the can of worms that you're opening up with that, if you know, you know. So we're just going to ignore that and act like it didn't happen, and we're going to go <laughs> and continue putting everything together. We've got almost everything routed. We've got PCV. We've got all the goods. So we just need a few more things, get the belt on, and we can at least hear this thing run. Super stoked to have this on here, even though we have a couple of, you know, hiccups, but everything's going pretty well for the most part. Okay guys, we've been making some great progress and it's actually back together, I think. I'm super nervous. Uh, I've never done this before, so it's very uh, not 
not my style to take something that didn't have forced induction and put forced induction on it. So I'm very nervous. I don't want to blow it up. This is one of my, you know, I only have three more of these engines, so they're very valuable to me. <laughs> um, it won't be the end of the world if it does blow up, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to go ahead and install this boost gauge. This is an AM boost gauge I had for another project, but I think I would rather put this on and not have to blow up. I, I just want to see how much boost we're pushing because if we're pushing seven or eight pounds of boost, that's a little much. I'm trying for the five. So we have all the other pulleys. So at least this will give us a reference and I can buy another one when that project comes to fruition, but it's not going to be a while. So for now, we're going to get a boost gauge installed in the 1983 Toyota Motorhome. All right, so we're just gonna feed this line through the firewall, because this goes to the sensor that needs to be in there. Oh, I forgot how much I like this. So right back here is where that sensor is. And it's just gonna loop under here and go with all the other sensors and then plug in to its new phone. Little did I know I'd be taking this apart so soon. Is that? All right, so since there was already holes here for this cruise control, I think a wide band is way cooler than cruise control. So we're gonna see if this thing will fit here. I don't know if it will, but we'll see if it does and if not, Maybe we can replace the heater vent with it because I don't have anything running to that. So now, will this fit? Big nope. Okay, we're getting custom with it. No heater vent. Boost. Boost. And I think I'm gonna do it ghetto and just wrap this in electrical tape. This is how we're doing this. All right, so we wrapped it in electrical tape. Now hopefully, oh, not quite tight enough of a fit, so we need a few more wraps. All right, so now it's a nice tight press fit in here. And once it's in, it's pretty secure. Don't touch it and it won't fall in there. just a little less than ideal but now we have a boost gauge how cool is that so no harm no foul nothing's cut nothing's broken all right so while we might have AC in the future we don't have AC right now so I'm gonna go ahead and use this AC fuse and the outlet of it to power our wideband I'm going to change the fuse from a 10 to a 5 because that's what it calls for is a 5 amp fuse and that will solve the issue for power to our wideband and then this slick little unit that I built will be functional. I'm sorry, I said wideband, I meant boost. It's boost, boost. So yeah, that's, that's what we're going to do here. So we're just going to get this dialed in and we'll take it for a quick rip.
Okay, so in theory, we now have everything done on this 3RZ to start it as a supercharged engine. And we also got this completely dialed. It looks great, done like it should be. So that's all put back together. This is all put back together. So I guess there's nothing left. Let's just start it and hope we don't blow it up. All right, here we go. All right, so about 10 minutes of messing with stuff. Apparently, I nicked a wire down there. Or not nicked, just pulled on one of the uh, wires to the fuse box down there. But everything's good. And it started. I'm going to start it again. guys well it sure did not get any quieter I think it looks sick super pumped letting it warm up just a little bit before we do anything but it sounds so good and our boost gauge works so it's it's responding I don't know how it should be accurate it's an AM so I use the AM provided Thing. So I mean it should be good. I think it's I think it's great. So I'm gonna let it warm up a little bit. Even the dogs are excited. We're gonna let it warm up a little bit. They're gonna go ease it in, take it for a couple rips, see what it's like. It's always good to warm it up before you take it out. So we ended up not having a tight coolant line on the throttle body. Not a big deal. I just go ahead and put a hose clamp on it that's already on it and it's set. But that's just a reminder. Check before you drive. All right, so we just got back in the car, just hit the crap out of my head on this, jumping into this thing. They're either too short and you hit your head, or they're too tall and you have to jump in and you hit your head, so. We're gonna take this thing for its first trip with the supercharger. Oh, wow, that's crazy. You immediately notice the difference down low. Holy crap. So I'll have to shut the garage down and I can't go all crazy I gotta let the EC learn the new trims because it's gonna be running a little lean and I don't want to blow it up you stay here all right let's do this Woo! all right I'm nervous, I'm not gonna lie. This is a lot of load constantly on that supercharger. So. That's crazy how much down low I feel. I've already pushed my AFR gauge, or my boost gauge in, so. Less than ideal there, folks. Don't play with your boost gauge when you don't know what you're doing. Thing 
zero to one pound. I don't think that's right. This thing is insanely more drivable already. I already can tell. Fourth gear is so usable at 40. Oh, this transfer case is dying. I just actually bought one, so hopefully I can get that in soon. But immediately, I notice how much faster this thing is. I mean, it's not like, whoa, but it's so much more drivable. So let's, uh, it sounds so cool. Oh, she's a ripper. It's all down low. I don't know, what the, I, I, I'm not floored. I'm not blown away. I'm not like, whoa, that's crazy. But at the same time, this thing is so drivable right now that money, money. All right, yeah, I'm stoked. I think it was a well worth investment. And I think it's dope. Let's see how it does. It sounds so cool. I'm shifting super early. I don't want to put too much crazy load on it, but I do want to. It's way cool, this is a new truck.